The Super Mega Baseball franchise has come a long way in a very short amount of time. Let's go all the way back to the beginning with Super Mega Baseball 1 Extra Innings in 2014. I honestly didn't even know the game was that old because the first time I heard of it was in 2016 uh, when it was released on Xbox Games with Gold. Uh, so I downloaded it and I absolutely loved it because, you know, Xbox, we didn't even have a baseball title at the time. Uh, but, you know, despite the player models looking pretty wacky and, you know, having that uh, oversized barrel plastic bat and uh, kind of the baseball, backyard baseball style graphics, uh, the gameplay mechanics were solid. Uh, so looking at this game in 2016 when I was first introduced to it, uh, two years later they released Super Mega Baseball 2 with extremely noticeable changes in graphics and gameplay and they even add online play. A humongous leap from the first iteration. So here we go, we fast forward to May 13th, 2020 and we finally have Super Mega Baseball 3 with franchise mode. Does it live up to the hype? Let's find out. Graphically, you can see there are minimal changes in Super Mega Baseball 3, but they have improved a good amount once again. Sure, the change isn't as drastic between 1 and 2, but it didn't need to be. Uh, the small details and the attention to detail is what brings Super Mega Baseball 3 alive, and it's graphically superior than the previous title. The details in the grass and the outfield, the dirt in the infield, it, it looks more like dirt and less like clay. You know, you can actually see the textures in it, and as the game progresses, you can even see dirt kickups around home plate and even on the mound. Stadium details have also been enhanced, most noticeably the lighting, and also with the new day and night cycles for each stadium, providing a new New experience with the older stadiums while also keeping the 14 stadium roster fresh. That's right, 14 stadiums, almost double the amount of what we saw in Super Mega Baseball 2. But other small details, just as the textures, the architecture in the stadium, uh, the location backdrops, it really ties everything together, bringing the stadium to life. Everything in this game looks polished. The player models are crisp and have more lifelike body ratio to them. Speaking of ratio, the spacing in the game improved most noticeably in the infield, which always felt a little tight in Super Mega Baseball 2, but the field looks a little bit bigger and more spacious like a true MLB baseball park. Pennant Race makes a return, which doesn't surprise me as it was a fan favorite from the previous title. Uh, the Pennant Race is back and smooth as ever with custom Pennant Race coming post-launch, uh, which will allow us to change innings played, games played, Pennant reset dates, and much more. Who we play with, all that stuff. It should be really cool. On the surface, you might be thinking the gameplay looks the same as you're watching this, but take a look under the hood and it's actually a really different experience. Uh, pitching is the most noticeable change and my personal favorite. Uh, power Power pitching now has the chance of throwing a wild pitch uh, if you hold down the power button for too long. Uh, releasing it at the right time will grant you that perfect 99 power, 99 accuracy rating pitch. Uh, but releasing it too early, however, and your accuracy will see a drop along with your velocity. Uh, this new feature creates just another layer of strategy when it comes to pitching. Uh, base running has also seen a good change as well, uh, being able to use the left thumbstick to aim at a base runner and then press the, score, uh, press the corresponding button to send him to that particular base. At the same time, you still have your previous controls like using the bumpers to send and retrieve all, uh, all base runners. The next positive changes in gameplay are the addition of player traits. A player can have up to two traits maximum and they can either be good or bad. Some of them involve increase in power versus a right-handed pitcher, or maybe just an increase in power and contact versus a left-handed pitcher. Uh, you can also have negative effects, such as RBI dud, where a player's batter rating drops when a runner is in scoring position. This brings a unique strategy to the game, especially when you're on the mound and you're facing a batter whose hot zone is on the inside of the plate. You could gamble if you want, but you may want to pitch on the outside zone of the plate to avoid a big hit. Player traits are a nice welcome to Super Mega Baseball 3, and especially when you're in franchise mode and it increases the playing experience. That's right. Franchise mode has finally made its way to Super Mega Baseball series with its own twist. Franchise will allow you to build your roster year after year, sign free agents, and develop players. 
Players also have age now and will eventually retire someday. You may also see a player's attributes regress as they get older, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you just get a, you know, sometimes you get a Frank Gore who's averaging 3.4 yards a carry since Super Bowl one. Uh, when it comes to budget, uh, you'll have to set them out for signing players, and anything left over will be placed into a separate pool for developing said players. Uh, the nice thing about this is you don't have to use your entire development budget as it will carry over to the next season. Uh, developing players are permanent stat increases in uh, various categories, whatever that upgrade will be, uh, and sometimes they have a chance to develop a trait, negative or positive. The stats are permanent, however, the, the traits are not permanent, as players can gain and lose traits throughout the season based on performance. Uh, the offseason in the uh, franchise mode consists of a 32 round free agency period where you can sign and release players and this is honestly uh this is where you get all the fun in franchise mode every player is on a one-year contract and they'll either sign with you automatically in the next season or they'll go into free agency or they're going to retire uh, if you want that player back you can always just sign them again in free agency um, and you can actually sign as many players as you want per round uh, but the caveat is you for every player you sign you have to release a player and for every player you release you have to sign a player so you're basically what I'm getting at is your roster number is always staying the same uh, there isn't any you know releasing two players and signing one or you know releasing a player signing two it's always a one for one the real strategy to uh, the offseason you may be asking because you know if you if you're understanding this you're like well if I can draft all the players I want in that first round, then what's the point of the uh, other 32 rounds? But this is where the gamble comes in, because when you, you, when you wait rounds to sign players, you're gambling on whether that player will be available or not. Each round of the offseason you advance, their salary drops, making them cheaper, but you're also risking another team signing them. So, for example, let's take a look at this second baseman called in Richards. Right now, round one, $13.9 million pretty high salary i don't know if i want to spend that much money on him but as i advance rounds his salary drops and if i keep going keep going eventually i can sign him for 6.1 million saving me a ton of cap space that i would have spent if i signed him originally but again i'm also risking the threat of another team picking him up by waiting week after week and if i go, and by the time i go to pull the trigger it might be too late we'll stick with franchise mode to start off with the bad things about the game and uh, franchise mode is interesting. Uh, it lacks certain features like uh, like a baseball draft, uh, trading players with other teams. Uh, but my real issue uh, is I'm curious if franchise is actually going to have any replay value in the long run. Uh, because you don't really feel like you can see your franchise or league progress and change over each season. Uh, when you win a championship, for example, you get this pretty lame 2D ring on the franchise menu, and in the summary menu, you see you've won a championship. But that's it. Once you advance to the next season, you don't see your ring anymore. There's no trophy to look at. There's no trophy case to go back and look at your franchise's history. Um, there isn't a way to see a player's career stats uh, or even past season stats. Um, there isn't a Hall of Fame. You, you can't see anything. Uh, I really think they missed out on good opportunities here, like, you know, maybe adding a trophy to the team photo after you've won one, or maybe all the players in the team photo are wearing rings. Uh, something small to remind yourself, like, hey, you know, this is the history of our franchise. Or, you know, like, as an example, 10 years from now, you've gone 10 seasons, maybe you've won three championships. When you view your team photo, you've got, you know, three trophies sitting there. Or maybe you have a trophy shelf, or... Maybe you can look at the league history and see which franchises have won the most championships, right? Uh, see who the Hall of Fame is, who has the most home runs in their career, who on your team has the most home run. But you, there's no possible way to view any of that. Uh, and I really think that's just a big step backwards and a huge missed opportunity in franchise. Um, I mean, when you take a look at Super Mega Baseball 2 real quick, they didn't even have franchise mode, but I can see my beautiful 3D championship ring there. I can always go back and look at it. I can cycle through and see my players' stats for the season and for the playoffs. I can see the league leaders. Um, so it's, it's weird that I can go back and take a look at that in the older game, but in franchise mode in the newer game, I, I, not only can I not look at it, but they just don't keep track of it. 
Another fix I would like to see is the menu system. Uh, they kind of went for this new modern look, but it's almost a little too minimalistic. Everything is blue, like everything. It's all various shades of blue and gray, which makes it kind of difficult to figure out what you're selecting sometimes, uh, especially in the menus when you're creating a team or creating a player. Uh, there's not a whole lot of contrast. Uh, and with a small font, it can sometimes make things uh, kind of difficult to see. Um, and then the other thing I thought was odd was the scoreboard including a fourth dot for balls and a third dot for strikes. Um, that's a bit odd as well. They, you know, they don't broadcast it that way. Super Mega Baseball 2 didn't have it that way. I'm not really sure uh, what the purpose was of changing that. Um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it in my opinion. Uh, and then the other bad is, you know, just the lack of game modes like a home run derby or practice is also disappointing. The big negative in this game for me is sound design, and oh my god, is it absolutely atrocious. The bat making contact with the ball often gives you this ugly reverb, like hollow church hall sound. I don't know, it's weird. Take a listen for yourself. Uh, the little chimes that occur when any text pops up on the screen can get very obnoxious and redundant. It's just loud. It's overdone. Uh, the crowd noise is terrible. It just sounds like a giant industrial fan blowing in your ear constantly. Uh, there's not a whole lot of booze when the other team hits a home run. Uh, it doesn't really get that much louder after you hit a home run. Or like in a close game with the final runners on second and third or like you know just in scoring position they don't get quiet if you know you're the one on the mound or if you're the one at the plate they're not getting loud um they're just constantly really loud and i guess the best way to describe it is it's flat and it lacks depth the crowd noise is flat and the crowd noise lacks depth that's the best way i can describe it uh, a couple other weird things was uh you can't earn star points in a custom franchise mode and you also can't sim in standard franchise mode. Very odd decisions made by the team in my opinion. So as you know, I rate my games on an obscure scale I made up because I feel like it. <laughs> and uh, I rate Super Mega Baseball 3, the bad news bears. I, mean, I know a tie is a lot like kissing your sister, as my old coach used to say, but the way we've been coming along, it's more like kissing a really hot stepsister, something like that, you know? But, um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I think, uh, I'm, I'm just saying, Pat yourselves on the back. The point being is Super Mega Baseball 3 is another improvement in the franchise, um, but it falls short on various ends. Uh, the sound design is pretty rough, to be honest, uh, and the issue with franchise mode just feels like it isn't all the way done yet. Uh, you can't complain too much because you know Super Mega Baseball 2 didn't even have franchise mode, uh, but not being able to sign players to multi-year contracts, uh, not being able to see career player stats, league stats, all-time leaderboards, uh, anything like that, it, it just kind of makes the franchise feel a bit empty in the long run. And that's the point of franchise, right? To build up your team, win the World Series, uh, and it's hard to build your team and feel like you've established something when you have to partially rebuild every season. And I know in real life you have to partially rebuild, but I think you get the point that I'm trying to drive home here. Um, I love the trade development, I love the gameplay additions, and I enjoy managing the budget and franchise, and honestly, I'm okay with it not having a draft, and I'm okay with no trades. I, I really enjoy the offseason, and I think it's really creative what they've done uh, with the 32-round free agency period. I, I really like that. It's, it, it, I did enjoy it. Uh, gameplay is solid, and it was before, but once again, like they outdid themselves on gameplay, so hats off to the development team. Uh, you guys are killing it. Uh, if you're on the fence about Super Mega Baseball 3 because you own two, uh, I believe it's worth it. Um, if franchise mode doesn't interest you, then maybe wait for a sale. Uh, but it's still worth it because the gameplay improvements alone definitely warrant a buy. Uh, hope you all enjoy the review. If you like the video and want to see more content, please like and subscribe. Peace.